Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Wacky Ideologies. This time, it's Hamiltonism. Now, some brief overview of Hamiltonism. Hamiltonism was created after Hamilton himself died, and was used by the Whigs as one of their many party variants in their Big Ten party, based on the ideas of Alexander Hamilton, and kind of took them to the extreme. Their symbol is the black ribbon, representing the black cape, the white shirt, and the black bullet hole that he was shot with. Now, Hamiltonism was created when the ex-Federalists who followed Alexander Hamilton rather than John Adams were inspired by the Federalist Papers, his national bank notes, and other small things that he wrote, especially his speeches at the original Constitution Convention. So they formed under the Hamiltonites, or Hamiltonism now, and they were really inspired, really looked up to him, and wanted to implement his policies, but less extreme so they could get elected. Now, the main ideology of Hamiltonism that the Whigs focused on was protectionism, basically trying to increase tariffs and stop free trade. This was an idea so that the US wouldn't be under one governmental system such as capitalism or communism, and they could rather work and have a more fluid, regulated economy, but not completely controlled. So protectionism was designed to protect the US economy, which is what they focused on while campaigning. But in general, Hamiltonism usually leaned towards capitalism more, as capitalism could benefit the economy, especially if it was going into the pocket of the treasury of the country, who would control basically all of the money and would have a partial veto on whether to fund projects or not, compared to the president asking the treasurer, hey, can you fund this, and the treasurer being forced to, rather than they would have an equal say whether to fund projects or not. But the president wouldn't be a president. Based on some things Hamilton said, they wanted to eventually implement a full-on elective monarchy, or a president for life system, where 75% of the population agrees on one candidate, and that person gets elected. If people fail to get 75% of the vote, then it's a dead-on tie until eventually they reach a majority of the vote of 75%. <laughs> oh, but don't be fooled, this was still the early 1800s. Only people who were smart could vote, or industrialists. These would be the electors, so they would either be really smart, really wise, party bosses, and just all-around powerful people who showed that they knew information and could follow it. So industrialism would have a huge part, as Hamilton was a big fan of industrialism, and so a lot of factory owners would become electors. But, just like Alexander Hamilton hated Thomas Jefferson, the Whigs and the Hamilton Wisps hated the Democrats, and the Democrats were very in line for republicanism, especially republicanism populism, which is what Andrew Jackson was elected on the basis of. So, they would try and kind of destroy the republic, especially the legislative branch, so the people would get less of a voice and the actual smart people could run. But Hamiltonism does believe in the three branches, but a pseudo-bankocracy rather than a judicial branch, where the treasury is independent from all three other branches, even though the judicial branch really doesn't really exist. But they believe that the treasury should be an independent system that should be protected by the treasurer, who, with checks and balances, is proposed by the president and elected by the legislators. Hamilton, having a lot of fights with Congress, leads to Hamiltonism wanting to diminish the legislative branch. They still make the laws and try and pass them, but really, the monarch has like infinite vetoes, and they're really weak, especially if the bank decides not to fund them. And the judicial branch doesn't really exist, so this can't be declared unconstitutional. But again, Hamiltonism really wanted to take its time. First, get in there, and then work out its problems. So overall, Hamiltonism is a pretty unique ideology. With the Whigs having a lot of ideologies due to their Big Ten party, it's interesting just to check in and see which one they like to focus on, on which of the Founding Fathers. You can check my sources down in the description of the video, and yeah, if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and yeah, have a good day. See ya!
Hey everybody, I hope you liked and enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. And yeah, as you can tell, I got my mic back again, so hopefully I sound better. And yeah, I hope you have a good day, enjoy your life, and do as you want, as long as it's not illegal. Anyways, bye! Whoa, what an amazing video. Just like Napoleon looking on burning Moscow, you should look upon the video on the left, or the video on the right. I really don't care, but you do, as long as you watch my video. If you don't watch it, I will care, and I will cry.